You're listening to Big World Network. Subprime Evil, Episode 10, The Thing in the Big Ditch, Part 2. Written by Robert S. C. Cutler. Read by Ryan Jones. Warning. Although there is no material subject matter within that couldn't be found in any general bookstore with no age constraint, this series is rated 18 and contains adult situations and content. Freak Show pushed hard against the handle of the sliding glass door while Matt searched the cluttered apartment, looking for the old wooden dowel that was used to jam it shut. Cassie glared at Matt, pissed at him for spoiling her quiet evening. She had been enjoying the sideshow put on by the weirdo down by the big ditch alone, before he had shown up. Why are you looking for that stupid stick? It's not like the guy's gonna climb up our balcony, Cassie yelled as she locked and chained the front door. You're so stupid. If he really wants in here, he'll use the front door. Duh. Matt ignored Cassie and continued his search under the couch, beneath the bed, and the pile of dirty laundry in the small hallway by the bathroom. What about the kitchen broom? Freak Show asked, still holding the door shut. Break off the sweepy part. Cassie blocked the entrance to the kitchen. No way! You're not going to break my new broom! Freak Show looked around the apartment and laughed. Why? It's not like you ever use it. Screw you, Devin. If you don't like the way I clean, then you can move back in with Mom and Dad. Um, when have you ever cleaned? Matt pushed Cassie out of the way, and with his foot, snapped off the end of her new broom. Can you guys have your sibling fight some other time? Matt placed the stick in the door track and closed the blinds. Cassie stomped off to the bedroom and slammed the door, while Freak Show hugged the wall and peered out through a space between the slats. Have you seen a baseball bat lying around? Matt asked him. Like an aluminum one? Yeah, white tape on the handle. I saw it in your closet, said Freak Show. Matt furrowed his brow. My closet? What were you doing in my closet? Um, Cassie let me borrow one of your shirts. Matt's face turned red. What the hell? One of my shirts? Cassie! Cassie threw the bedroom door open and yelled back. What do you want, jerk? You let your brother wear one of my shirts? All of his were dirty. Jesus, what's the big deal? They're my shirts and I don't want someone else sweating in them. Cassie rolled her eyes. It's not like he was wearing your boxers. I think it's time your brother went home, Matt said, as he blew past Cassie on his way to fetch the bat. Hidden beneath a gym bag, two oiled stained work jackets, and a box full of old sports trophies, Matt found his bat. He tossed the gym bag and jackets onto the bed, barely missing their sleeping, fat orange cat. He tugged hard and pulled the bat free from the box, wondering how Freak Show had seen it if the bat was buried beneath all of that other crap. He was just about to yell for Cassie again when he heard her scream. Matt ran into the living room, holding the bat defensively out in front of him. What's wrong? Cassie had her hand over her mouth. He's on the balcony! Turn off the lights! Matt said. He can see in here. Cassie ran through the apartment and turned off all of the lights. As the apartment went dark, an eerie sense of dread washed over Freak Show. He snuck a peek outside. Wide-eyed, he moved away from the sliding glass door as fast as he could. That isn't a guy! Matt relaxed his posture. I thought you said someone was out there. Not taking his eyes off of the door, Freak Show nodded. There is or there isn't, Matt prodded. Freak Show knew he had seen the thing on the balcony before. He just couldn't remember where. He stood in a daze, searching his memory, blocking out Matt's repeated questions. Pictures, stories he had read, and TV shows he had watched all blurred together. Damn it, he thought to himself. Why do I have to smoke so much pot? I can't remember a thing. And then it came to him. The dead, black eyes... Mouth full of razor-sharp teeth and long, muscular arms. Through his obsession with the occult, Freak Show knew the thing waiting on the other side of that door was right out of mankind's darkest nightmares. Holy shit! It's a fucking demon! 
Freak Show blurted out. Bullshit, said Matt. Ain't no bullshit, man. Look for yourself. Cassie ran behind the couch. You better not be trying to scare us with your stupid occult crap, Devin. Freak Show joined his sister behind the couch. This is for real. I swear to God. As Matt peered in between the vertical blinds, Freak Show and Cassie crouched down so only their eyes and the tops of their heads were visible above the couch. A low growl resonated from the other side of the sliding glass door. Claws clicked on the wooden slats. The balcony creaked from the weight of something large pacing back and forth. Matt couldn't process what he was seeing. Its form wasn't human, but wasn't animal either. A shadowy outline of a head appeared just inches from his. The cold glass fogged from warm breath. Chirping and cooing was followed by another growl. Matt stumbled backward and then ran to the front door. Shit! 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 What the hell is that thing? You guys are really scaring me, Cassie cried. Freak Show put his hand over Cassie's mouth and motioned for her to move closer to Matt. All three huddled near the door, listening intently, ready to bolt if whatever was on the balcony somehow made it inside. A painful silence engulfed them as they waited. Nerves frayed near to breaking. Matt was just about to unchain the door when a mournful cry broke through the calm. With a loud crack, something hit the sliding glass door hard enough to spiderweb the glass. A second hit shattered it completely. Pushing the blinds away, a dark figure standing over six feet tall entered the apartment. Cassie screamed. Panic-stricken, Matt fumbled with the chain and tugged hard on the locked door. Freak Show shoved him aside and managed to undo the deadbolt, only to pull the door open with the chain still attached. Cassie cried out in terror when the thing in the room let out a screech. With all of his strength, Freak Show jerked the door hard enough to pull the chain out of the wood trim. The three of them poured out of the apartment, yelling for help. Ruben Pineda, Matt and Cassie's next door neighbor, opened his door. Shit, dog, he said to Matt. You guys need to keep it down. My old lady is trying to sleep, and she's like nine months and ready to pop and all. You need to let us in, Reuben, Matt pleaded. I'm not letting you crazy people in my house. You don't understand, Cassie cried. There's something in our... No, you don't understand. If you all don't shut up right now, I'm going to knock on little cop's door and have him arrest all of your asses just for being stupid. Reuben looked directly at Freak Show. Especially your drugged out loser of a brother. A low growl reverberated just on the other side of Matt and Cassie's door. Freak Show spied the stairwell and felt for the car keys in his front pocket, realizing with a sinking feeling that he had left them on the kitchen counter. Matt, please tell me you have the car keys. What? He gave a quick glance at Freak Show. Not me. Reuben crossed his arms and glared at Matt. Man, you better have no fucking dog in that apartment. The lease says birds, fish, or cats, but no dogs. That thing's gonna be barking and all, waking the new baby and pissing off my old lady. With an explosion of splintered wood, the creature burst through the door onto the front common balcony. It crouched low and sizing up the four people just in front of it. Cassie's breath caught in her throat. Her heart pounded in terror. Matt and Freak Show stood gape-mouthed, paralyzed with fear while Reuben just stared, trying to make sense of what he was seeing. Advancing on all fours, the creature sniffed the air, never once taking its eyes off of its intended victims. Thick, long strands of saliva hung from its tooth-lined mouth. Fluttering chirps resonated from the back of its throat. All four sets of claws clicked in succession against the hard cement. Its black eyes intermittently reflected back the recessed lighting with each lumbering step. That ain't no dog, man, Reuben said. No shit, Matt and Freak Show said simultaneously. Ten feet from them, the creature rose up and growled. Reuben's eyes widened. He rushed back into his apartment, slamming the door. The lock turned with a click. Cassie, Matt, and Freak Show took off running. The scrabble of claws on concrete propelled them faster. The thing was right behind them. Gator pulled up to the apartment complex, thankful to be safely home. He tugged the ill-fitting uniform that had been loaned to him after his impromptu swim in the river. The shirt was too small and pinched in the armpits, his pants baggy and too long, but at least they were dry. 
The only item of clothing that did fit were his shoes he was wearing, although he still had gunk and silt between his toes. As Gator got out of his car, screams filled the stairwell just in front of him. Three people ran out into the parking lot, their cries for help piercing the quiet night. He blinked wearily at the scene as the three ran past him before his tired brain caught up. He turned around to see where they had gone and stepped on the sagging pant legs causing the trousers to twist at his waist. Gator stumbled and tugged at his belt. Holy buckets, can anything else go wrong tonight? He walked around his car with a hand on his sidearm to find the three young people hiding by the back bumper. Come out, you three, and... He hesitated, trying to remember proper police procedure. And identify yourselves. The trio didn't even look at him. Instead, they hunkered further down by his wheel well. Exasperated, he reached for his radio, forgetting it had been ruined in the river along with his personal phone and wallet. With his seemingly endless patience at its breaking point, Gator threw the broken radio to the pavement. You three get up now and step away from my car, Gator yelled. The aggravated and authoritative tone in his voice took him back, reminding him of his father. You don't understand, officer, Matt said. Freakshow pointed toward the stairwell. Dude, there's something after us. Gator hoisted up his pants. First of all, my name's not Dude, and you three are about to be in a lot of trouble. With tears streaming down her face, Cassie turned to Gator. Please, you gotta help us. It's going to kill us. Who's going to kill you? A low growl, coming from the direction of the apartment complex, made Gator pause. Matt took Cassie into his arms and held her tight as she began to sob. Freak Show looked up at Gator with eyebrows raised and pointed at the stairwell again. Was that a dog? Gator asked, knowing in his gut that it wasn't. Gator removed his gun from its holster and flipped off the safety. As he turned to face the apartments, the creature emerged from the entrance of the stairwell. Gator raised the gun with both hands. His grip was tight, but his palms were moist with sweat, making it difficult to maintain control. The gun shook a little in Gator's hand as the creature got on all fours. It lowered its head and charged in a flash of teeth and claws. A rush of adrenaline surged through Gator's body. He fired point-blank, emptying all ten rounds in its direction. The creature reared up and screeched, its cry rebounding off the concrete. Then it twisted away and bounded off in a blur around the building and out of sight. Listening to Big World Network.